Hey, Carpet Cleaners, it's John here. And in this week's video, I'm interviewing Jason Bennett of Oxyfresh Midland, Michigan. He's going to be telling his amazing story about how he started and scaled his carpet cleaning business and everything that happened in between. It's going to be an awesome story. I'm sure you're going to find it super inspirational. If you've never heard of me before, my name's John Williams and I run a company called AGB. We specialize in one industry and one industry only, the carpet cleaning industry. We specialize in one thing only, getting dudes like you booked out with jobs on autopilot using our specialist digital marketing system. I'm on a personal mission to try and help as many carpet cleaners as humanly possible, not just survive, but thrive, whether that's through working with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis through our marketing program or through this YouTube channel. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Jason Bennett, Oxyfresh Midland, Michigan. I just want to backtrack a little bit though before you signed up with like Oxyfresh. I think you mentioned at the start of the call that you had another business. Am I correct in thinking that? Yeah, so I'm a, a serial entrepreneur. Tell me, I want to know about the things that you did prior to owning an Oxyfresh franchise. Tell me about your entrepreneurial journey up to that point. That's really fascinating to me. What was the first business that you did? What year was it? What was it that you did? Did it fail? Have you still got it going? What did you do next? so on and so forth. I want to hear the Jason Bennett story fully. Tell me about what you did before Oxyfresh. Prior to 2021, I worked a nine to five job like everybody else, right? So I had been in sales and service. I had worked for a major home improvement retailer, was a manager. They had done some structural changes. So I lost my position as a manager. I was completing my MBA at the time. And as I looked around, I'm like, all right, well, I need a job. So a paint company had a outside sales position for the home improvement retailer that I was leaving. They basically hired me on the spot because here's a guy who's coming as a manager out of that with all this inside knowledge. So I did that for about four and a half years, right? Wasn't super passionate about it. The money was okay. The benefits were good, allowed me flexibility and being able to do different things with my family. But I sat down in the year that I won a president's award for sales that year. Wow. My merit increase was 2.75%. My metrics were all great. And the year before my metrics were lower and I got a 3.6% raise. My manager's going over this with me. And like I said, I'm a metrics driven guy. And he's like, so what do you think about your valuation? You know, you went from all threes to twos this year and you know, you increased this and this and your presence club and you know, you just really knocked it out of the park this year. I said, yeah, that's awesome. I'm like, but 2.7%, what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I got a better raise last year and did worse last year. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. How does that work? Yeah. Right. And well, how it works is uh, corporate finance is going to determine what everybody's raise is going to be, right? Yeah. The corporation has shareholder goals to meet and you know, I've got an MBA. I know that yeah. it doesn't bother me to that, but that just made me think, well, you know what? I'm always going to be tied to whatever finance can afford as a raise. What am I going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm going to get a lot of money from a bonus. I'm going to go out and start a business. So mm -hmm. I had a couple of friends that were interested in firearms and we started a firearms training company. Wow. Cool. So we launched that, got Great. that up and running. It was growing. I was able to step away from that paint manufacturer. And wow. like I said, good job, steady money, easy work, and just jumped into being an entrepreneur full time. Wow. So as I did that, I'd gotten that LinkedIn message about looking at franchises. Do you still have that business now? I do. I am sitting in the office of that business right now. So wow. cool. So basically, as we talk right now, you have your Oxyfresh franchise and then you have your gun, your firearms training business. And what year did you set that up? We started that in 21. So 2021. So it's been live, what would you say, like a year, a year and a half? Amazing. We're getting ready to celebrate two years in 
February. Wow. So amazing. amazing. And how many people have you got inside that business? Do you and like what, two other guys, something like that? Yep. So we've done just shy of 200 concealed pistol license students this year. We do some church team security training. So we have a security team for a local church here that uh, comes and trains with us. And a lot of people go, well, how do you go from firearms to carpet cleaning? Exactly. That's my next question. <laughs> so this is why I tell people when you're buying a franchise, you're buying a system and the system is what really matters. Everybody has a widget and whatever the system that's behind the widget is going to help determine whether you're successful or not. And as I evaluated those four other franchises, I was like, I don't know anything about carpet cleaning, but when I go to the OxyFresh website and I see they have 200,000 five-star reviews over 17 years, that says a lot, right? So they must be doing something right. Yep. And then as I talked to the franchise developer and, you know, talked to a franchise owner, people just being transparent. Yep. This is what our business model is. This is what we expect out of our franchisees. Absolutely. If you follow our system, yep. you're going to be successful. So that really meant a lot to me. So my military background allows me to follow orders really well. <laughs> I'm like, you know, when, when we were doing our initial setup, I ended every video call with, all right, what should I be focusing on? What do you think I'm not focusing on that I should be? And what are my next steps? And I just make a list and go down that list, right? Check those things off. Next call, exact same thing. What do I need to be doing to be successful? How am I going to get to that next step? And with the growth that I've seen with AGB, I will probably be adding another tech, probably March timeframe. I've just been so blessed in all of this. And when you're brand new or you've been struggling, marketing is the key to that. And I've had people in contact with me that are like, well, I can't afford to spend money on marketing. You can't afford not to spend money on Absolutely. marketing. Give them. It is that catch 22, right? You know, where yep. do I come up with the money to spend on marketing? You got to find it. You probably have it. You're just not willing to part with it. Absolutely. And then finding a good partner in how to spend those dollars wisely. When I opened up in August, I threw a bunch of money at a bunch of different ways in marketing, right? Trying to figure out one, I don't have any franchises within about two hours around me. So this is a lot of people's first experience with Oxy fresh, right? Seeing the branding, seeing the van drive around town, seeing your guys, his videos pop up on Facebook that you're running for me. One of them has like 22,000 views. It's just yeah. crazy, right? 22,000 views. There's probably 200 comments on the different series of videos. There again, the technology has made it super easy for me to go in, answer those comments, answer that chat bot. So it's just been very, very seamless and helped build brand and awareness. So Absolutely. now when I'm wearing my logo shirt around town, people are like, oh, hey, I see your guys' van or, hey, you know, my neighbors used you to clean their carpet and you guys did a really great job. And, you know, yeah. we've booked with you in two weeks. And a lot of that is, you know, you have to find that good marketing partner and market to what your area wants. And the Facebook marketing that you guys have done has <laughs> just been amazing. And I say that that because my other business, I'm the guy who's in charge of all the marketing for the other business, right? And it's not easy to navigate Facebook marketing. What you guys have developed and brought to the table has just really, really overwhelmed me in a good way. There's days when I'm sitting in front of the chat bot going, man, I wish I would have learned how to do stuff like this because this is where it's at. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you'd probably find you'd have a little bit more of a challenge leverage in Facebook for things like firearms. I think it goes against their policy and stuff like that. But yeah, it does. You made some really strong points there. Yeah, I think one of the key traits of like an entrepreneur, a successful one is the willingness to invest in themselves and their business to move the needle forward and the willingness to take risks. Because ultimately, it's like the classic saying, you know, you need to spend money to make money, right? That's yep. basically 
a classic saying, and it's so true, you know, and ultimately we live in a world now where people need to know that you exist. And these platforms like Facebook, like the TV, like radio, like the flyers that come through the door, you know, you have to pay for all these things. And if you don't, then no one's going to know that you exist. So it's a necessary thing that all businesses need to do. It doesn't matter what kind of business it is, you need to advertise. And here's the other really interesting thing is that like everything, there's going to be ups and downs of your marketing, like there's going to be busier times times is going to be quiet at times. And it's all about understanding that, you know, even when it's slow, don't pull the plug. Because if you pull the plug, then you're definitely not going to get any jobs. You yeah. still need to be in the game, even when things like slow down, like you should never pull the plug. You still need to keep going. And it's about riding out those waves, those times when it's a bit slower, having the systems in place to make sure that you have a pool of repeat business that you can tap into when the new customer acquisition slows down a little bit and then you know enjoying those peaks when things pick up but it is a roller coaster and it is a challenge and you do need to invest in yourself and those are the key things that make an entrepreneur successful and it's obvious that you have those traits you've got one successful business and you've just launched this one it's a few months old and you're already crushing it and you've navigated it if you are watching this if you do own a floor cleaning business if you would like more jobs if you want to get booked out on autopilot if you would like to find out a little bit more about working with us head down to the description below where you'll find a link to schedule a call with us and we'll run you through how everything works and we'll get you signed up and we'll change your life for the better we'll change your business for the better and on that note see you on the next one guys later